welcome to principles of marketing class in today's class we are going to continue with the uh, the marketing mix which is called a first marketing mix product in last uh, class we discussed about the uh, nature of a product uh, marketing mix today we will continue with the packaging so what is packaging and what are the importance of uh, packaging in marketing mix designing and producing the container or wrapper for a product it is just like a definition for a packaging so but packaging uh, plays a very vital role it's not like like uh, what do you say uh, it is like uh, it's to protect the product uh, but it also uh, gives attractiveness which makes a person a customer to buy the product it gives uh, information about the product like uh, uh, what brand it is and then uh, what are the contents in that what is the expiry date uh, so so many informations you get from the packaging now we move on to labeling labeling is the display of label in a product a label contains information about the product on its container packaging or the product itself so labeling is an any written electronic or graphic communication on the packaging or on a separate but associate label so you can see uh, labeling in the packaging so it gives you uh, it may be in letters it may be in graphics okay uh, yeah, i mean uh, it can it give so many informations like uh, uh, what is a product is uh, it's a soap or a shampoo or a cheese or butter so it will give you what product it is then what brand it is uh, so like a uh, sony samsung uh, like uh, hamam it gives you the name of the brand it also has a warning in it for example some product is written that the product contain traces of nuts and should not be consumed by a person who is allergic to nuts so it's like a when it comes to food something may be allergic information so warning or uh, sometimes uh, it may have harmful ke chemical or the product may have a sharp tool or something which cannot be i mean uh, handled by uh, uh, children so these kind of uh, warning also uh, will be given in the labeling labeling is also an important part of the brand of the product and the company it's the uh, it uh, informs the customer what uh, brand that uh, uh, product is it helps the product stand out in the market and identify it as a part of a particular brand so uh, depending upon the labeling uh, designs and uh, uh, graphics i mean it may be a very attractive thing uh, for the customers and catch the eyes of the customers and then it may stand out uh, as a different product a unique product which helps the customers which helps the organization to increase the sales also so labeling printed information appearing on or with the package importance of labeling labeling is essential as it helps to identify the product and also grab the attention of the customer as i told you it uh, depending upon what information it gives and who is the target customer it may uh, the interest of the customer may vary okay so it can be combined with the packaging and can be used by marketer to encourage potential buyers to purchase a product the information given on the package may uh, either tempt the customer or may not tempt the customer to buy the product like i said tell you as if some customer is allergic to uh, say uh, uh, peanut so a, a food item which contains uh, as a part of his uh, ingredients a peanut uh, may make a customer not to buy the product so this are uh, i mean as i told you the information will either make the customer to buy or not to buy okay label communicate how to use transport recycle or dispose of the package of the product it also uh, i mean the labeling will also give you information like uh, how to re, uh, recycle or dispose or something like that like say uh, say if for instance uh, the, the battery uh, uh, in the uh, smartphone sandal they say hey, do not throw away the batteries okay disposes uh, dispose the battery in a responsible manner 
because i mean if it is i mean taken near the uh, fire or something it heat it may explode so as uh, dispose it in a separate container so the label will also give information on how to dispose that particular product labeling is also used to exaggerate the product sometimes uh, the product quality may not be of very good but what happens the way uh, it is the uh, packaging or labeling is done what happens it will attract the customer to buy okay so this kind of labeling helps a viewer to differentiate the product from the rest in the shelves of the market nowadays uh, the more than the product quality uh, are the features the labeling one is a main source of uh, yeah, attractive thing to the customer so so companies spend lot of money and time to uh, make the labeling more attractive a person can find out about the ingredients of the product this helps to spread awareness among the customer about the item and they are consuming and labeling also helps to mention the ingredients so as we discussed labeling will give information about what are the ingredients present how much of that particular ingredient is present and then uh, awareness like uh, how much is the saturated fat in terms of uh, any edible item or food item how much is the saturated fat unsaturated fat how much is the sugar is present how much is the salt is present uh, because uh, people who are more health conscious they are more concerned about this if there is any trans fat is there uh, or it is zero trans fat is there okay how much is a protein it serves for your day to day protein need uh, uh, and then what are the vitamins are there uh, how much percentage of uh, vitamin uh, recommended by daily nutrition okay rda so all this information are will be given usually for the edible product so this helps uh, a customer to Uh, make a choice whether they to go on to purchase a product or not labeling is another very important factor in a product it should show the correct information about the product this is all more important in products such as pharmaceuticals very important in terms of uh, pharmaceutical uh, medicines and all label is very important uh, i mean people just don't used to see the expiry date but also people want to know what is the what is a what is the uh, ingredients uh, uh, the medicine has and then uh, is there any warning whether the medicine should be uh, prescribed uh, will be taken only uh, after the prescription by the uh, medical practitioner or it's like uh, can be taken over the counter so uh, this inform important information is also will be given in the uh, label labeling should also contain information relating whether the product has harmful chemicals especially if it is a product that is meant for children okay as i mentioned earlier when it comes to children the parents are quite <coughs> choosy when they uh, uh, design the product so labeling will be a very uh, handful or a helpful when the parents want to select when want to know how much is the nutrition is the food is more into have like empty calories like some of the uh, i mean uh, fizzy drinks uh, or they have some nutritional values if it is got some nutritional values how much of nutritional value it got so all this information will help the parents to choose a better and a good uh, nutritional uh, food for the children then product line a group of products that are closely related because they function in a similar manner are sold to the same customer groups are marketed through the same type of outlets or fall within the given price ranges uh, that is called a product uh, within a product and this is a product line say here the example is given uh, uh, hotel groups Uh, all these things uh, belongs to the uh, Marriott Hotel, and they have the Marriott Hotel have different categories according to serve different uh, customer groups. What is a Courtyard Marriott, JW Marriott Hotels and Resorts, Fairfield Inns and Suites. Uh, this is uh, uh, like this is like a four star hotel, Courtyard Marriott, JW Marriott Hotels and Resorts is a five star hotel. Uh, this one is. 
JW Marriott is meant for uh, people uh, who are like uh, rich businessmen and uh, courtyard is meant for the people who are like upper middle class Fairfield field, uh, Fairfield inns and suit are meant for like uh, people who are uh, usually uh, traveling in the what you say highways or uh, people are uh, staying in the countryside. It's quite uh, economical, uh, and then it, even people in the countryside they can use this one. Then Spring Hill suits. This uh, category is for people who are staying in the hill stations. Uh, that is a uh, it is meant for that then town play suits uh, marriott this is uh, moreover for the business executives who are uh, like having meetings and appointments uh, businesses in the uh, small towns residence in marriott is meant for the uh, executives business executives who want to have a long time uh, stay durations like uh, uh, two weeks or one month so they uh, categorize uh, JW Marriott, they categorize uh, their uh, different uh, hotel, that's called product line, as a uh, Marriott, uh, uh, Courtyard, Fairfield, Spring Hill, Town Place, Residence Inn. This is to fulfill the different needs of the different customers, like uh, uh, rich business people, like uh, uh, like upper middle class uh, people and then people who was, uh, want to stay in the hill resort, people who are business executives who want to stay in a small towns and business executives who want to stay for a longer duration. So to fulfill the different uh, target group, they have created this product line. So this is an example of a product line. Products mix decision. Product mix decision or product portfolio consists of all product lines and items that a particular seller offers for sale. Example, Procter & Gamble's product mix contains of, uh, consists of three major product lines like detergents, soaps and uh, shampoos. So, so product line means <clears throat> a particular product related to the previous product. Like you, you can also say, you see here, it's a detergent so, uh, soaps and shampoos all related to the bathing items uh, like a uh, shaving cream a razor so this if a razor the company is dealing with uh, like uh, say gillette they have their uh, razor so related to the razor is a uh, gel or shaving cream so that is a product line like uh, uh, nestle has got maggi noodles Okay, then usually Maggi noodles will be accompanied by uh, tomato sauce. So they have Maggi tomato sauce. So that is a product line. So product mix decisions, uh, FRPNG. Here we can see uh, detergent soap. They have uh, bold, they have cheer, they have tide and uh, ivory snow. That is uh, for the detergent. And uh, that's a detergent powder. We have detergent liquid also, the febri, tight febreze, then we have uh, tight cold water, then tight dowry. These are the detergent. One is a uh, powder form, another is a liquid form. Then we have the uh, soap. In soap, we have Kame, Ole, uh, all the soaps. And then we have shampoo, Clyrol, Pantene, head and shoulders. So this is a category, uh, different products under shampoo and uh, the different uh, under soap products and different products under detergents. You see that this is a length and this is the width. So this is the, how they plan to uh, fulfill the needs of the different target group. Product mix decisions. Product width refers to the number of different product lines that companies carries. For example, Procter & Gamble's with detergent, soap and shampoos. Procter, uh, product length refers to the total number of items that company carries within its product line. For example, P, uh, PNG's detergent product length is Tide, Ivory, Cheer and Bold. So product depth refers to the number of versions offered of each product in line. For example, PNG's Tide product depth is uh, Febreze, cold water, and downies. Product consistency refers to how closely related to various product lines 
are in end use production requirements the distribution channels or some other ways so when they do the decision for the product mix this is how they do then we move on to the product life cycle <clears throat> the stages of product life cycle product life cycle involves like a four stages that is one is introduction stage second is a growth stage third is a maturity stage and the fourth one is a decline stage so what happens uh, why a uh, business should go for this product line so uh, depending upon in which stage a particular product it they will plan the marketing mix say if i in introduction stage uh, they are going to introduce the product so there what happens there uh, more attention and focus on marketing the product like through promotions advertisements uh, these kind of things and they uh, allocate more resources for the uh, campaigns and uh, uh, advertisements and all those things and you when you take the last stage decline stage the i mean the uh, the, uh, the market share will may go down the sales may go down so what happen they will spend the company or business will spend more money on uh, r and research and development to what you say to uh, i mean to find out a new future or uh, revamp the product so that the same product uh, will be introduced in a different form or will be introduced with the added features or they do some uh, light changes and introduce again so what happens again it will go through the all these four stages okay so if a business know what stage their product is it will be help them to plan where to allocate resources where to cut resources what to do next and all those things so product life cycle plays a very important role uh, for a business to decide uh, what to do and all those things growth stage as it uh, go growth stage which uh, gives usually you start i mean uh, slowly reducing the Uh, money spent on uh, advertisement here the uh, sales will increase so when the sales increase mean what will happen uh, the revenue for the business will also increase at maturity stage slowly this is a stage where the uh, the sales uh, uh, growth will stop so it will uh, like it will be like a steady growth so this time either you go if you think you can grow either you can spend money on advertisement and stop doing advertisements and all those things and here no need to increase the number of production during growth stage the businesses will usually increase the uh, i mean the production but when it comes to maturity stage since the growth is like a, a reduced there no need to i mean increase the production and as i told you earlier at, when they come to a decline stage it is a time for the company to Uh, go for uh, either R and D to introduce a new product or new product form or product line, or they we may have like a, a like a, a brainstorming session uh, with the people in the production or uh, do some marketing research and uh, come up with the new features. Either the features can be say a soap, soap can we have a, a, a different ingredients. or uh, a perfume or even a packaging can be uh, changed or the distribution can uh, channel change be changed so what happens uh, a soap will have a different the product will have a different future or new feature so that it it will be like something like reintroduced in the market with the new features so that it again have a one more uh, life cycle so this is how the uh, business will plan Uh, for the products or they may uh, if the quality the product is saturated in the market they may introduce another product in their uh, product line or they may increase the width of the product okay uh, they may introduce a new product like uh, you have seen the previous example like uh, the uh, detergent powder they have different uh, detergents under the same brand multi brand so you can also decide it to whether the business to go for a multi brand uh, depending upon the marketing research what is uh, changing uh, needs and wants of the customer so uh, we will end this class with this one we will continue with the product life cycle in the next class thank you